Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week what we're going to do is take a look at a, uh, another tool that we haven't looked at related to Mountain Lion Server, and that is Workgroup Manager. Now, Workgroup Manager is an additional tool uh, that Apple has available. It's another software tool that allows you to work with your server at a different level. It allows you to look at the different files and configuration things that you've got set up. Uh, it allows you to kind of look at those things uh, from the perspective of the directory uh, admin. Uh, and so it gives you the opportunity to uh, edit files a little bit more in depth if you want to do that. And so it just adds a few more features and ways of doing things. Now, because it is linked to your uh, open directory, uh, your actual username and password and all of that was set up when you created open directory. So if you haven't created your open directory yet, uh, then I would uh, suggest that you do that. and You might want to go back and look at uh, my previous tutorial on Open Directory uh, in this YouTube series and uh, access that. And that will help you uh, have everything set up and ready to go so that when I get into the different uh, settings and things, you'll already have your uh, passwords and all that set up in, in your directory ready to go. So that's why I wanted to show this to you. Now, uh, Open Directory, uh, I mean Workgroup Manager, uh, if you want to get that, you want to go to Apple's website, and you can see there I've got the uh, direct link to where you want to download it. It's at support.apple.com, kb, you know, slash kb, slash d, l1567. You can see that right up here at the top. And so you want to go to that site, and right here is Workgroup Manager. You want to make sure that you have the one for 10.8 because that's the server you're using. You don't want to use a different edition uh, of that. You want one that's going to work with Mountain Lion Server. So you just click the uh, download button there and uh, basically your download will start as you can see up here in the corner and once that happens it's a, a DMG image. It will uh, launch and it's a package that you walk through and double click to set up and that will actually install the uh, Workgroup Manager program. So just walk right through the installer, it'll put it in the right place and you'll be in good shape. Now let me just pop that down. I've already done this and so I wanted to show you what that looks like. Let me just get rid of all of these. And this is Workgroup Manager right here. And so as you can see uh, it's another application. Uh, looks a little bit similar to what we see with our regular uh, server application. Uh, but this one gives us uh, a lot more fine, uh, fine grain tuning that we can do. Now, a couple of things you'll notice. First of all, you'll notice it says Workgroup Manager Local, and that's because I'm only logged in right now as a local user, uh, which means that there's not a lot of different things that I can do uh, to these different accounts. You know, if I if I log on them, uh, you'll notice it gives me information, but I have no way of uh, editing. Uh, these different things. You can see a lot of these things are grayed out because they don't want me actually uh, using these things, deleting records and adding users and things like that because I'm not the administrator. And so you can see right here it says I'm viewing my um, LDAP directory, right, my open directory here, but I'm not authenticated so I'm not allowed to change anything. So in order to be able to change anything and take a look at some of these things in depth, you click this little lock over here and what you're want, going to want to do is put in your directory administrator password. Now, that's not the regular server password you've got. It's not any administrator of the server that you put in here, but it's your directory administrator password. And so in the previous tutorial that I did, if you remember, I just left it as DR admin as the username. Uh, so I knew that was the directory admin account. You may have named it something different. Whatever that is, just remember you have two sets of passwords for this, and you want to enter only the directory administrator password. And then you do that, and then you put in your uh, actual uh, password then on here. And then when you're done, you want to click Authenticate. Once you've clicked Authenticate, then it takes you right in, and you'll notice that all of this opens up now, and I have the ability to change uh, the things in here. And so what I want to do in this tutorial is I want to give you a bit of an overview. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the different sections and things together uh, so that you get a feel for it and uh, then we'll do some more in-depth stuff in later tutorials. Uh, first of all, what I want you to see just across the top here, uh, I've got the ability to click uh, this server button. When I do this, it'll actually open the server application if it's not already open. 
So it's there's kind of a, a way to get to the server app quickly. I've got the accounts button here where I can look at all the accounts that I have available. I've got uh, preferences where I can manage the actual preferences for these particular accounts and I'll go into detail on what each of these mean. But you can see that uh, some of these things look very similar to the things that we have in Profile Manager. And so you'll see that we can actually do the same things in here that we can do in Profile Manager if, uh, if you prefer to use this interface. So it gives you the option of being able to do that. Uh, over here it says you can add a new uh, user if you want to. Uh, again, I'm not going to do that. You can delete a file, those kinds of things. Uh, if you want to make those happen, uh, refresh, new window, uh, if you want to open a new window and you can do that let's say you have two servers and you want to view them side by side you can open a new window log into that server account and authenticate from that and then you've got the ability to do a search alright so that kinda of gives you the, the stuff across the top if you look down here you'll see that I've got let me just go back to accounts for a minute you'll see that I've got uh, users right here I've got my user groups here and so you can see that I've got my various groups that I had set up in the previous tutorials uh, that I've set up actually in the server uh, application. Again, let me just uh, quickly uh, show you that when I come to groups. There's my two groups that I've got there that I've set up and you can see these two groups show up in here as well. So these two things talk to one another, it's integrated. Uh, you don't have to worry about those things not overlapping. So changes, again, changes you make in here will take effect in the actual server app as well and you'll see those things uh, kinda go across each other. Uh, I've also got here uh, computers so I've got individual computers that are sitting right here and I'm going to show you in another screencast how to bind uh, computers to your uh, server and those things will show up here and then we've got computer groups that will show up on this side as well and you'll see all the different members and things inside uh, the computer group section right here so let's go back and let me just uh, in this particular tutorial let me just take you through some of the details on the users and groups area so that you get an idea of some of the things that you can work with with uh, users and groups so I'll just uh, stick to my uh, directory administrator one here or actually you know what let's do this let me go with uh, this uh, SEO account that I've got here so you'll notice in the basic screen I've got the name I've got a user ID now this user ID is assigned uh, kind of automatically by your server when you put things into the server application but if you wanted to change your user IDs to make them match uh, you could do that uh, I'd, I'd proceed with caution on it because there'd be a little bit of reset that would have to happen uh, across your network it's really not too big of an idea on what these are unless you've got massive m uh, numbers of people on there you might want to keep these in a particular order uh, but you can change that right here if you want to you also have the option here to uh, edit or add your short names. You can uh, put that in here or add another one if you wanted to. Uh, password, I've got the password information here. I can do some resets on that if I want to. Uh, then I can talk about what the, this particular user can and can't do. Uh, and I've got it where they can access uh, the account. Uh, so it enables that and I've got down that they could administer the server as well. Uh, then you've got kind of your account summary down here where it kind of tells you uh, you know a little bit about the location of your directory and open directory that kind of stuff so it just gives you kind of a, a, a feel for that information I can also add a picture here if I wanted to you know if I wanted to give this person a picture I could come in here and say yeah let's add this picture to their account and it will add a picture in there and all I've got to do is uh, save it to add it I'm just gonna keep going here uh, you can also work with privileges and so I can say what kind of administrative of capabilities do I want this particular individual to have I can say full or none and uh, I can just say hey I don't want this person administering the server anymore and as soon as I go to none and I save it then I can lock them out from having to having that access anymore so it gives you a quick way to do that in the advanced area uh, these are these are a few of advanced configuration things again unless you're really administering a server you don't have to worry about this but you can allow simultaneous login on managed computers uh, and have a, a login shell uh, that you set up. Again, if you don't understand what any of these things mean, and I don't really have time to go into all of them, uh, you probably don't want to run them. You want to leave them at default. Uh, you can say user password type, whether it's uh, on the open directory, since it is an open directory, and gives you some options on that, uh, but I would leave that alone. And then you can put some comments and keywords and things in here, but again, this is probably, again, it says advanced for a reason, not anything that you'll have to worry about as a home user. Uh, groups up here, uh, it 
which shows what groups this particular individual uh, is in. Uh, you know, short name of the group is staff, which is kind of a default group that everybody goes into. But then you've got other groups. He's got he's an open directory administrator, so he has op uh, the ability to administrate the open directory. He's an administrator's group, and he's also in the work group. And so you can add groups over here. Uh, you can take groups away. I can take them out of particular groups if I don't want them in there anymore. Uh, it gives me the option of doing that if I want to. Then I've got the home uh, area here, which basically tells me where uh, his home folder is, if he's got one. And so uh, this particular person uh, doesn't have uh, their own home folder. They've got uh, right here on their own hard drive. Uh, that just means it's a local one. They don't really have one set up. If I wanted to create a uh, home folder, I could create a home uh, folder right here. Again, very similar uh, to what we do in the user accounts when we assign the home folder, when we were talking about users and groups in that tutorial. I can create that and set it up uh, right here. Or I can even just add, I can basically say where I want it and just say, hey, I want to add it right here. And then I'm going to click, you know, create home folder now. And it would add that in there. I can also do his disk quota for his home folder as to how much space I want to give him on the server. So again, you can see a lot of overlap from the things we did with users and groups. Got an info area here, and in here, uh, which is great, is I can add a lot more uh, just information about this particular user right here within Workgroup Manager. I can add their home, their phone number, their email. I can add what their uh, chat clients are in terms of instant messenger and uh, iMessages and that kind of stuff. Home page, web blog. So it gives me kind of a, a little bit more detailed uh, view of the information on the particular users that I got if I want to add all that information in and have that as a part of my open directory structure. So anyways, that kind of gives you an idea of how that works. I'm just going to revert so we don't have to worry about this. Let me now go over here to the groups real quick and take a look at that and see what we can do with groups. I've got my kids profile here that if you remember I set one up for my kids so that I wouldn't have to worry about uh, configuring them one at a time. I could do it as a group. And so again you've got their name and their short name which is exactly what I had set up uh, in the server application. That's why that's transferred. It's given them a group ID. Uh, I've got uh, a picture path here that I can lay out if I want to. Again not, not that important but I can do that if I have a path to a particular picture. Uh, I also have uh, comments I can make about this group if I want to add more information. Uh, and of course I, they got photo uh, information over here. Uh, let's see the members and so it lists the different members uh, that are a part of this group. Uh, so I've got my kids in there with all of their information uh, on who they are. I can add people to the group right, uh, right here inside uh, Workgroup Manager. little slide out drawer comes out and I can choose who I want to actually add uh, in addition to this group if I want to. And so uh, that's fine. That, that thing will slide out for me. Let me go uh, back here. Just push the plus button. It goes back in. Uh, then I can set up where their group folder is and uh, basically set up a group folder on here just by clicking add and then I can say who the owner is, short name and long name and I can do a search again and, and the information pops out and I can add that stuff in there. So there's some basic things that I can edit uh, on particular uh, groups and things like that. So that gives you a little bit of a feel for these two areas here and uh, let me just show you uh, what I'm going to do in another screencast. I'm going to talk about the computers and computer groups and then we'll probably talk a little bit more about how to use preference and things, uh, probably including uh, how to set up uh, mobile accounts both here and on uh, Profile Manager. So we will be getting to that pretty soon. I know uh, people have been asking about it. So that's all I have for this week uh, with just kind of a quick tour of Part 1 of work, work Group Manager. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.